I'd like to welcome you to this hypnotic communication crash course where I'll be featuring, talking about, sharing, and hoping to educate you on some of my favorite hypnotic languaging. Look, I don't know what your reasons are for being here. I, I know mine. I, I'm, I'm a fan of all of this. And I've used it and practiced experientially and often unconsciously use this in my day-to-day -day activities. But, but I don't know what your reasons are. But if I were to guess, <laughs> just the fact that you're here tells me that you might be interested in hypnosis and you might have some idea of how powerful hypnotic languaging can be. And if any of that's the case, what I'd like for you to do, what I'd hope you can do is open up to the possibility that you can learn so much more about hypnotic languaging than you ever thought you could and that you can also learn faster than you ever thought you could and if you like this i'd like you to go all the way through with me and see how far this goes because first times around you might not even hear the hypnotic patterns that i'm using but when you come back to this as a recording you might even begin to be able to pick up ah this is what he was doing so that the next time around when you sit back check in on your notes you'll get a richness that you didn't think possible that you'll begin to see and hear and notice and feel oh this is what he's doing oh he, this is what he said so that it'll begin to make even more sense even as your unconscious mind's already processing that for you you'll have a conscious grasp of what you're doing. But for now, you know, just first time through, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. And later, and in, in bits already, as your unconscious mind calls your attention to these things, pay attention to the language I'm using, what I'm doing with my languaging, the voice tone or tonality, and the stories that I'm using, perhaps, as I'm sharing this with you. And whether you're using this, in whatever context, if you're using it for therapy, for speaking, for training, for chats, for persuasion and influence, or just, you know, day-to-day -day interactions, whatever you're using this for, my hope is that you open to the possibility that this can be very natural, not clowny, not dancing monkey-like, not silly, but actually quite invisible. Because the truth of the matter is, because of the way we have to process language in our neurology, all of language is hypnotic. Yeah? <laughs> Let me tell you about uh, my personal interest in this. Uh, what first sparked my interest in this as a young man was this notion of, well, I'm a guy, so this notion that you could say certain things and that a lady might be more interested in you than she otherwise would <laughs> and later i got an experience of oh we can use this as a strong force for good in the world we, we can use this to help people out and later that tracked with what i really like doing which is, is in fact coaching and uh, being a physician and like really helping people out really helping people get more and more functional so let's look at this conscious and unconscious mind thing while you're listening to me consciously your unconscious mind actually processes what i'm saying it, it's called a trans derivational search it reaches for the possible meanings of things so by example if i speak of microphone your unconscious mind processes, oh, what did, this, what, what did he mean in this context? It, 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 uh, oh, and then you look for the interpretations for microphone, or whatever your interpretations are, and there could be several. I don't know. I don't know what your mind's reaching into or reaching for, but your unconscious mind processes what's exactly meant. And this process is called trans-derivational search. Trans-derivational search. Your unconscious mind looks for the meanings, deletes the other meanings, and figures out which meaning to present to you. And, and the fact that this happens, this trans derivational search happens, and that it takes usually like a 30th of a second to, to, to process something per word. Well, we use this in hypnosis, in hypnotherapy. When we use this 
phenomenon to overload, to occupy, so to speak, to keep occupied the conscious mind so that we could speak directly with the unconscious mind. So we use hypnotic languaging in that fashion. Like when we use negations, like I don't want you to not think about the things you don't want to think about. When you say something as complex as that, the unconscious mind is kind of figuring that out for you while the conscious mind gets it gets too occupied and in that moment while while your conscious mind has its hands tied so to speak the unconscious mind is trying to process what you're saying and what happens is you have a window to speak directly to the unconscious mind and it doesn't have to be like fancy languaging it can be very simple very easy like the way I might like to bring you to past, present, or future in very simple ways. Like if I were to ask you to imagine your best possible future, when five years from now you look back at this moment and feel really overwhelmed with gratitude, understanding that this was the exact thing that you needed to do at that moment in time. When I use languaging like that, it, it doesn't sound clowny. It can be very natural. And it does the trick. It does the job. You get the opportunity to get an emotional involvement, a visual, auditory, and felt, a seen, heard, felt experience that really involves the unconscious mind and uh, keeps the conscious mind from over-processing things. And so there's that golden opportunity where you speak directly to the unconscious mind. And uh, this is for whatever contexts you might happen to be using this for. It's just that my first gate gateway into this was, well, there was coaching therapy, but, but truly at first there was this context of attraction. I was a young man and trying to figure things out and hmm, we can use this to influence how much a person likes us. Well, that got me interested. So I don't know what your hook is, but I'm still hoping that yes, you do use this in an ethical fashion. Otherwise, things not to your liking might begin to happen. <laughs> Joke there.